When Jim Clark won the Indy 500 in 65, it's, it's quite, quite a big result for anybody from overseas. So I feel quite patriotic about, the, about doing the paintwork. Um, it's a, a British driver that's featured on, on one side. The brief we had was to give a, quite a retro design, something that reflected design for the car. So we took a step backwards, kept it quite, quite subtle, but we went for some classic airbrush pictures on each side. What we do when we start the design, we, we try to get as much down on a computer as we can so that we can see how it's going to look. Um, we do a computer rendering of the colours, the images, we copy and pasted the photos onto the design so we can see how they'd look on the helmet to, to make sure everything fitted really. And then it's, it's down to putting it onto paintwork. Because of when they sit in the car, you've got to try and keep as much detail off of the back as you can. Because once they get in a car, sort of three quarters of the back can't be seen anyway because of the sides of the cockpit, the back of the seat. So, I mean, it's, it would be pointless to put loads of detail on the back because the second you get in the car, you're not going to see any of it. When people see the cars from years gone by, they can relate to it a bit more than they can to a lot of the modern cars. I mean, everything's electronics and high technology. Um, when somebody sees a, a 65 Lotus, they can see how it was made, they can see how it works, and it's, it's a lot more accessible. People can see, it's, it's just that whole human aspect to it. This aspect of the paintwork is fairly straightforward because the, um, the computer's done all the, the hard work for us with the mask. Um, what we have to be careful of is not to get too much of a build up of paint. So we've got to get the, enough colour on there so we get the, the right shade, but not so much that you get a build up around the small areas. You've got to know when to stop putting the paint on. If you, if you put it on too heavy, you start getting rough edges. This helmet is, is only going to be used on race day and as the, the schedule is in, it's quite tight, it's not going to get there much before the race, so I'm guessing that the first time I see it is actually either the day before the race or maybe even the morning of the race, so uh, hopefully he likes it. I've never actually seen an indie race um, in the flesh, as it were. I've watched loads on telly, so I'm quite looking forward to going over to see the Indy 500. What I'm doing here is uh, airbrushing in a, a drop shadow where the, the pictures are. Uh, just a, a subtle black fade so that when the, the pictures are, are revealed it looks like they're, they're lying slightly above the, uh, the helmet shell. Just looking forward to taking off all the tape really so I can see how the pictures work against the, the green background. I've been working on the pictures for a couple of weeks now on a, a white background but hopefully when I take the, the tape off and see it against the background with the shadows it should really make the pictures jump out. I'm going to take off the tape now to reveal the pictures. It's always a bit, um, a bit worrying when you take the masking tape off in case um, paint's bled underneath or anything's happened. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a handmade process. It's not computer driven, so it's, there's going to be little bits and pieces that happen along the way, but uh, all, all looking good so far. I mean, it's this aspect of the design that's going to stand out on the track. It's the um, iconic Lotus stripes. There's probably a couple of hours left to do the logo on the top. Um, maybe three or four hours involved in the lacquering and flattened back. And there's a bit more work on the airbrush sort of effects on the, on the cars. So I'm guessing there could be anything sort of eight, nine maybe hours left of work. Oh, it'll be ready on time, even if I've got to work through the night a few times. I've done that before. <laughs>